to the Atlas Film Awards with your hosts Ryan and Andrew. And Andrew, good evening. So this evening we shall be awarding some awards to a, some films. A very particular award. A very particular a award. A beautiful golden award painted by my own delicate hands. <laughs> so delicate. So delicate. The coveted Atlas Film Award. Ooh. We, we, we call it an Atlas for sure. It's, yeah, I mean, just taking off a couple of words. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, this evening we will be awarding some awards to some films. Now, our approach to our awards is slightly different to, say, uh, the less famous of, uh, award ceremonies. Like, you know, the, the Oscars. The Oscars and BAFTAs. Uh, and if you've heard of them, you might know what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so our approach is very different. Rather than going for all these Oscar bait artistic films that have been coming out since January, mm -hmm. we're taking a step back. We're approaching films and performances that may have gone under the radar a bit. Mm -hmm. So performances that make a film so enjoyable in a way that an artistic film, not necessarily the focus is in the right place. Mm -hmm. So. And also, unlike the Academy, we are not just, you know, white men telling you what, what they think no. of things, because we're... No, no, that's... No, that, no, that is us, yeah. That's entirely what I want. Oh, yeah. never, um, mind. Um, never mind. Well, on with the awards! Yeah. Our first award is for Best Supporting Character, and it goes to... Michael Sheen... Michael Sheen... In, wait for it... Passengers! Passengers, that film that we've been going on and on about. Yes. We're yeah. actually giving an award. That, that film you shouldn't watch, but you should definitely not watch. Yeah, so there you go. We're giving it an award. Yeah. Now, what we mean by best character award rather than best supporting actor is best supporting character. We've chosen to phrase it that way because we want to give an award for a character and the aspects of that, both the performance, the writing, the juxtapositions within a scene, the to everything that builds the character up which makes it so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And we've chosen Michael Sheen. Andrew. <laughs> we've chosen Michael Sheen because, I mean, his acting is great, he's a brilliant actor, and in this Can't part he plays the android, or well, not the android, the robot, the robot, perfectly, and adds so much to a very terrible film. Yes. And I feel that if that's not being a great supporting character, then that nothing is. Absolutely. His performance alone is that perfect level of retracted, cold but warm at the same time. The sort of fake warm Absolutely. of the computer the, program. The uncanny valleyness of very mm. human but slightly off and slightly uncomfortable, which only grows and grows throughout the film. It's getting it just slightly off. Yeah, just, 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 just slightly. Like. So, um, well done, Mr. Sheen. Congratulations. Congrats. And enjoy your award. Mm. Like we enjoy passengers. Uh, <laughs> our next award is for technical aspects within the film. Mm -hmm. This is including animation, CGI, cinematography, editing, all those little technical things. And which film shone above all the rest. Mm -hmm. Andrew? And the film that shone above all of the rest mm -hmm. was... Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One, we have to give them something. We did. I mean, we could have quite easily given them all the awards because. Yes. Even. Well, we our position could've... on Star Wars has been made abundantly clear. Yes. But we feel we've given this award with good reason. Absolutely. The use of CGI and the special effects in Rogue One was astounding. It Absolutely. managed to stay true to the feel of the original trilogy without needing to rely so much on the actual physical uh, physical props mm -hmm. and um, models. Absolutely, that's... it is that fine line between CGI and practical effects. Now obviously mm -hmm. Force Awakens was heavy, heavy, heavy on practical as were the originals, and then the abominations that are the prequels, heavy on CGI. Mm -hmm. This has a fantastic middle ground, it uses CGI but it it melds it so nicely, it looks so real, using these old models but in digital format to create, you know, this perfect mixing. And of course there is also CGI, Peter Cushing, Grand Moff Tarkin, mm -hmm. which is bafflingly good, you know, a baffling piece of CGI. Yes, sort of beautifully lifelike and yet at the same time. Not quite. Absolutely. Which works perfectly for Tarkin as a character, but mm. let's not get into that. And it is one of those 
things that are, you know, we feel that will be remembered in film history. I mean, look mm. at Star Wars has always had these kind of grand moments in filmmaking. I mean, Attack of the Clones was the first film to be entirely digital. Rogue One, arguably, is the first film to create a fully realistic CGI recreation of a dead person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Technically two dead people if you count Princess Leia. <laughs> Let's not get it. Oh, I'm really sorry. Anyway, Rogue One, best technical aspects by far. Yes. And best actor and best actress and best film, but whatever, we'll also get another one show. Our next award is an old favourite for all you Die Hard fans. <laughs> it is the Eddie Redmayne Award for acting most likely to get awards. Absolutely. Now this award appeared last year on our podcast of awards, which you can find on our channel. It was awarded to Eddie Redmayne, funnily enough, for his performance in The Danish Girl. A performance which was quite clearly just to get Oscars and just to get awards. And so it Maybe a little unfair, but that's how it comes across. In so. that spirit, we are giving this, the Eddie Redmayne Award, to... Casey Affleck in Manchester by the Sea. Yes. Yes, indeed. Well, I think that is clearly going to win some Now, now don't get us wrong. Seriously, don't get us wrong. The performance is phenomenal. He does a fantastic job. He plays the character brilliantly. We sing his praises in our yes. award of the, of, yes. of the film. Yes, no, his acting is excellent. However, <laughs> however, he serves a purpose, and that purpose is to win awards. Mm. No two ways about it. That's what the film is, and that's what the performance is. So, here's your award that you so desperate... There you are! Oh, it's, uh... Yeah. Hold my drink. Yeah, you... <laughs> there we are. That's, uh... It's all better. It's all better. Coming to you, Casey. Our next award is where we get into the big territory of the awards. Our first in is, of course, Best Actress. We've chosen to give this award to a performance which not necessarily was in the forefront of a film, certainly not a leading role. Mm. Leading lady, absolutely. Leading role, definitely not. This award we are awarding to Michelle Williams for Manchester by the Sea. Andrew? Well, in her performance, just what struck me was the, the, the power and the emotion and just the sheer believability of yeah. the character she played. It's a shame she wasn't in more of the film mm -hmm. and even Given her limited presence, she still managed to be a more compelling character than Casey Affleck's character, who the film was about. So this is well deserved. Absolutely, and and again, what is really really important about her performance and her character is the film wouldn't work without her. Mm -hmm. She holds the film up. Casey Affleck's you know reclusiveness and his whole performance would not work as well if he didn't have a good cast to bounce off. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, these scenes with him and Michelle Williams... Especially the apology scene. Absolutely, the apology scene when she approaches him and they have a conversation about their dark and mysterious past. Mm -hmm. they, they, they talk and... Casey Affleck is beautiful in that scene, but it wouldn't work at all without Michelle Williams' deep opening up of her emotions. It's mm. it's a stunning piece of performance and I'm surprised that she's not been given more recognition for the role. It's just a shame that this is all we can offer. Yeah, we would we would put some yeah. diamantes on it. <laughs> if you want it to like just just let us know really. Our next award is for Best Actor. I bet you didn't see that coming after with the Best Actor Award. <laughs> would you add them in eBay? And we're giving this to it's quite an obscure one. Absolutely. This is one that not everyone will have thought of. Almost no one will have thought yeah, of. Yeah, absolutely. Us, which is why we're doing this. Yeah. It's Daniel Bruhl. Daniel for Bruhl. playing Zemo. Yes, Zemo. <laughs> no, I said Zemo. Zemo. You don't know Zemo. <laughs> How can you not know Zemo? That name again. Zemo. Zemo. From the film Civil War. Yes, absolutely. Captain America Civil War. <laughs> now, Daniel Bruhl plays the villain Zemo in this. Um, and what's fascinating about his character compared to all the other villains, although he doesn't necessarily have as much screen time or as much of an impact necessarily to the whole story, his scenes are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He is menacing. He is more menacing than any other Marvel villain so far. He's scary. Yeah. He's, he's the Patrick Bateman of the Marvel Universe. And what makes him even better is that his character is just a man. He's not a superhero. He's just... A man, and that he's a man with a motive. Played so 
well. Yeah. And so, and it, even more than that is is a man who has lost everything and has given up everything to exact his revenge. Mm -hmm. And the way that Brawl plays this with this cold, you know, retracted, d d has no emotion whatsoever, real proper psychopath stuff. Um, and it's the scene that really made it for me is not sorry, not even Daniel Brawl scene, but. The writing of the film, later on we discover that Brule has been posing as this doctor for however long. Mm -hmm. And the maid goes into this hotel room where he's been staying, and this missing doctor's corpse is found in the bathtub, which is a great little scene. But then you realise the entire film, while he's been pretending to be this chap, He's had a decomposing body in his bathtub. It's it's so clever. Like it's such an enjoyable little bit. And you could have put that performance into any psychological horror movie, any slasher movie, any kind of great horror, and it would have worked just as well. And it was in a Marvel film. And it was and in a Marvel film. Just think about that. Like, and I think as well we should pay attention to the fact that he is the villain in a film featuring every notable Marvel superhero, Absolutely. and he holds his own Yeah, uh, against all of say, these actors and all of these characters, and he is incredible. Yeah, he's not included as much as we would have liked, yeah. but even, you know, you take out Iron Man punching Captain America and all that crap that goes on there, you know, the main body of the film, take that out, <laughs> all the Zemo films alone just work so nicely. I mean, you almost want a Zemo versus Captain America film alone, you know, take out Civil War, have a, mm -hmm. have a standalone fight between those two, yeah, it would be so much better. Yeah. So the next award is the Big Boy Award, it's the one we've all been waiting for. But actually, it's the two we've been waiting it's for. It's two, so best film, we have decided to split into two categories to make it a little bit fairer. Mm -hmm. So our first category is best artistic film. For artistic read pretension. Absolutely, any, any film that kind of is made for, as you, we've said, you know, the Oscar bait films, but even more than that, you know, a film that focuses on cinematography, a film that focuses on character development and deep contextual bullshit and all that kind of stuff. That's an artistic film. So your La La Land's Manchester's by the Seas, all, all that lot, mm -hmm. basically. And then our other, other lot. Our uncivilised, uncultured, entertainment-centred awards. Absolutely. I mean, that's a little unfair, Andrew. But, uh, no. The films that are most entertaining, the films that have the most entertainment value to them, the films which you go and see and it's just a good cinematic experience mm -hmm. altogether. Enjoyable film. Absolutely. So, to begin with, our best artistic film goes to are you going to make me say it? I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. La La Land. La La Land gets half the award. Andrew? Well, La La Land... I may not have enjoyed it as much as I'd hoped, but it is artistic and it is yeah. spectacular and it is filmed very well. Yeah, I will, absolutely. I will concede that and I will not begrudge it yeah. this. Trip. For me, the reason that we're giving this award is La La Land as a whole piece of cinema is fantastic. It takes on those tropes from the classic sort of 1940s, 1950s cinema that it's attempting to emulate and it brings a whole new rejuvenation of life to them. Uh, the cinematography is stunning, the direction is spot on, the performance is beautiful. Uh, it, it, it's a really, I mean, it's an Oscar film, yeah, sure, but it's it's enjoyable and it's just a lovely movie. And personally, I, I came away and I did feel a little moved, if you like, by it. Maybe it's a bit too strong, but it made an impact on me as a film. And, you know, only a good piece of art can do that. So that's why I'm giving this award. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. <laughs> the second half of this award goes to our more entertaining films. Andrew? Well, I'm afraid you may already be bored with hearing us sing the praises of this film, but it goes to the Lego Batman movie! The Lego Batman movie, last week's review. Because it is a glorious, beautiful film that covers Stunning. everything from comedy to just yeah. sheer drama and emotion. I went to see it for a second time the other day and was almost moved to tears by some of the emotional scenes. 
I cannot stress enough how good a film this is. Yeah. It is so funny, it is so clever. Ryan, do you have anything to add? I just, yeah, absolutely. It is, it's a very clever film. It is, it is U-rated. U-rated. It's a U-rated film. And it's so mature in its writing, not necessarily in its content, obviously, mm -hmm. but in its writing it is so on the ball, you could compare it quite happily to any of the best comedies are rated if not slightly lower, like... It, it, it's, it's, <sighs> it's also the best U-rated gay romantic drama I've ever seen, <laughs> and I've watched only one yeah, of those. This, this, this but, romantic, oh Christ. But it, but it is. You're not wrong. I've, ne I've never said you were wrong. <laughs> it's a gay love story it's, at heart, it's, but it's, it's also a, a Batman rabbit. film. But it's also oh, it is a yeah. thing of beauty and, and such fun. To to take the mick out of Batman in such a way that everyone gets on board with the joke, mm -hmm. but not in a nasty way. It's a celebration. Yes. It's just it's so much more than an animated film to sell toys. And it is just enjoyable, through and through enjoyable. So, uh, um, half the award to La La Land and half the award to Lego Batman. Hi. Actually, yeah. There, there we go. Um, La La Land can have this bit and Lego Batman can have the better bit. Yeah. <laughs> is it a better film? I approve this message. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, those are our awards. Marvellous. Put that back together. There we go. Thanks very much for uh, uh, for joining us for the Atlas Film Awards. We hope you've had a good time as we have. Andrew? Andrew! Yeah. Andrew! Do the end card. This is strong apple juice, right? Yeah, you, no, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Just have some, mm. have some, have some more apple juice. Okay. That's right, drink it all down. Um, like, comment, oh, that's all of it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Another f video over there. And uh, we'll see you next year. Yay! Why is our, why is our last video floating in the air over... over YouTube, Andrew, it's magic. Okay, okay. You go back to YouTube.